We're gonna do the back three, so this back window, this back quarter, and that one. Um, we're actually gonna do this in Lexan's carbon film right here. Um, we gotta test this stuff out. I have been testing it some, but we're gonna give it a more uh, long, uh, this car sits outside, so it's gonna be on there for a lot longer. And then also we have Max Pro's uh, ceramic right here. They sent me some samples, so we're gonna throw some ceramic on the front, and I'm gonna do a comparison with some other ceramics that I'm familiar with. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing, first thing we're gonna do is prep this back glass. Uh, so let's get this going. So we're gonna line this whole window with my glass aid. And I'm here people in the chat going too, so I will get to it in just a sec. Da, 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 da. I haven't done this in the last streams, but I figured for this one, because it's a two-door, it's not going to take too long. All right, what do we got? Do you work for yourself? Asked by Trey Smith. Uh, yes, I do, actually. I'm completely independent now, and there's a couple of shops that I actually contract for. Um, so they bring in the work, they call me in, and I go and get it handled. So I also schedule them a couple days a week, which is a, a pretty good fit because most uh, accessory shops, glass shops, um, they don't always keep you busy six days a week. So you kind of have to be a little bit flexible with that type of stuff. So we arranged a couple of days and they try and funnel all the work to those days. So I take here, I tint um, for a couple other places too. So being that it's winter, we're definitely gonna have to kick things up in this garage. Yeah, um, who was that, who was that, who was that? Uh, Yos said he's out of East Ohio and it's slow right now. Yeah, it definitely slowed down for me too. Um, I have a main shop uh, out in Shelby Township. They keep me mostly busy. Um, but it slowed down, um, a little bit last Tuesday and then today there's one appointment and then it flopped. So that's why we're going to have to be a little ambitious here. So, um, we have this, this is going to dry. This is from start to finish how I do things. So I have a couple of tools here all laid out, um, to get started. So I'm not jumbling around on certain things. Um, front doors first while this dries is usually how I do things. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for my film. Let's go ahead. We're going to put, um, not Lexan. Let's put Max Pro. Oh shit. I just realized something. This was in 20%. It's going to be a little dark. We might have to uh, take this off prematurely. I'm not sure. I wanted to play with this stuff though. Shoot. I totally forgot this was in 20%, but that's what I had them send me. Oh, we're going to do 20 on the front doors, and then we're going to see how this looks. So, this is their ceramic. They don't know that I'm doing this, and I don't know. Figured we'll just take a quick look-see, see what it's like. See where they put their tape spots on. Color's decent. Never seen it before. I mean, it feels fine. Color's nice. A little rigid. Cool. Let's go ahead and put this on. Pretty sure I have to turn on the car, too. There's always something. So we're going to unroll this. This is a 40-inch roll sent out by them. And... We're gonna chop this in half. So it's only a 15 foot sample, which is actually good enough for the entire car and some. So we chopped them all. Being that's a 40 for sure. I mean, enough for the fronts, enough for the back, and a little bit extra. How's the stream? Are we, are we still okay guys? Hopefully, 
Hopefully it's not too jumpy or anything. I'm setting things a little bit different today. So we're gonna go ahead and double cut these doors just like we did on that Audi in my last stream on Friday. JR88, yes I do. Uh, Trey Smith looks good. Uh, from North Carolina. I'm a mobile window tinner headed to a job now. Welcome Trey. Alright, so let's give this some juice. Let's turn off the air. And the radio so we don't get demonetized. God, that would be annoying. Uh, is there? Oh yeah. Maybe I can shut off these parking lights too. Perfect. All right. You just two fronts and a brow on the 2020 Explorer. That sucks. Hopefully it picks up soon. Yeah, this time of year, it can get scary slow really quick. Um, but it should, you know, only a matter of time before it picks back up. People get used to the weather change a little bit. That initial cold hits and then it like kills business. People, you know, kids went back to school a little bit ago and whatever else, so. Um, JR88 says, uh, says I'm not working at the shop anymore. Or asked about that. Um, the, let's see, Auto Tint City, I am no longer tinting for them because they started to slow down. Might do something in the summer, but most likely not. Um, my other accounts are slow right now. So, grabbing a little bit. So my other accounts are a little bit slow this week, so gonna be an interesting week but it gives me some more time to focus on uh, getting my own local stuff together JR88 asks am I charging more for more expensive cars or basically less for cheaper cars no same price for both depending on how nice the car is Reason being is the older cars really are typically harder. There's more cleaning involved. Um, they're not as nice. You know, they have their own problems. So, I mean, if you're slow, I guess you can give a discount, but that's all up to you. I like to try and charge the same for most cars because most cars take me about the same amount of time. And I go from there. side going vertically okay so somebody just asked uh, why do the fingers pop up on the side um, and that just has to do with how you shrunk the window and if you shrunk it enough so let me go into a little bit more detail on what's going on here so I have actually two pieces of film here because we're gonna double shrink this window together um, but if it was one piece of film treat it basically the same so what I do is I create a little bit of a gap here. I create a little gap here. This gives me most of my film flat on the window. And then I'll squeegee. Oh, jeez. Hang on, guys. I got a phone call. <laughs> hey, Pete. What's up? 
Can you hear me? Do you have something for tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> of course, my only account for tomorrow called me right now. Um, so I sweep everything to the bottom and then heat stuff up right here and then basically create a, like a smiley or I don't know, whatever you want to call it, like a curl right at the bottom. This stuff is different too, this stuff is slow. One second guys. Hey Pete. Okay. Okay, so just a set of doors. Okay, I'll be over there early. Probably 10.30. Oh, wait, it's at Camfield? Okay, alright, I'll be there. Um, it's been slower, for sure. Um, been reasonably busy, but it's, yeah, it's been slower now. Alrighty, sir. Thank you. Right, bye. <laughs> well, that was fun. Let me catch up on the chat, guys. Um, so hopefully this is still working fine. Uh, my account for tomorrow just called, and all they got tomorrow is a set of doors, which is great. Drive all the way out there for that. Um, is that a few... Let's see. Da -da. You're using Max Pro. JR88, you're using Max Pro. Yeah, we're testing it out for this live stream. Um... All right, so we were going over the fingers a little bit. Uh, what brand of tint are you using? Lumar, Alexa, and right now we're using uh, Max Pro's ceramic on the front doors, and then we're using uh, Lexan carbon on the back because we need to do some testing. So my wife's gonna be thrilled, but she gets ceramic on the front, so that's good. Oh dear, we, uh, we just lost a little bit of Max Pro. So. We're gonna bring this pattern over to the other side, but yeah, I had an account call me. So that's why uh, things went dark for a second. Yeah, they're not super busy. Cause I was thinking of either going live today or tomorrow and I just didn't hear anything from them. If all we got is a set of doors, that's not exactly exciting for a live stream. Let's go put this back in a box before we knock it over again. But let's, let's throw that. When you work in tight quarters, when you work in tight quarters, things get a little bit snug. I should wrap cars? <laughs> no, I am actually not super interested in wrapping cars. Uh, I've thought about vinyl for like the, for like hoods and roofs and stuff like that, but it's never been, a big interest for me because of how time consuming it is in relation to window tinting. So I specialize in tint. I like specializing in it. To be honest, it always seems like one thing balances out another thing and I get enough tint work to stay in that field. So it's not that I wouldn't be opposed to, like I said, going outside into hoods and stuff just to experiment and whatnot, but it's definitely not something that I'm considering for full time. Um, I charge, 
Personally, for charging for ceramic, yeah, I mean, it's definitely more expensive. Um, I charge the same amount, to be honest. Like, yeah, they're a little bit more prep, but... They're a little bit more prep work, but it's... I don't know, unless they're horrible. Um, I usually don't come across anything that's like, you know, can't be taken care of within an extra four or five minutes. And that, to me, isn't worth... Uh, Charging the customer extra, because when somebody's got an older car, they're generally not wanting to pay a lot extra anyways, but I guess if you can get it, go for it. So we're gonna uh, go ahead and start scraping this. Like you'll see with this one. Nothing, nothing super crazy. I haven't tinted this before. <laughs> Somebody said this is a tight squeeze. Yeah. Hi, brah. But yeah, somebody said this is a tight squeeze. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Somebody watching from Scotland. Welcome, sir. Uh, not a new shop, just my own uh, garage downstairs. So it is tight down here. We're not fitting any full-size trucks and SUVs in here. But we can fit an Explorer. Uh, reasonably comfortable. Um, I've tinted in, in spaces like this before, so I'm no stranger to this. Um, I've tinted in spaces just this wide where you could fit trucks and SUVs, and that was, that was a big pain. Distracted with questions. All right, let me pick one. Let me focus on that for a sec. <laughs> I like that one. All right, it's, uh, sound panels in my own garage. Yes, so the sound panels here, just some basic acoustic foam, um, really cheap stuff. Not very good for for sound dampening. The whole reason for it, though, is for the uh, for the color. Because um, honestly, I wanted more of like a uh, a studio space rather than just a tent shop. So that's the lights um, up top. That's the RGB strips on the bottom. Like I just wanted to try and dress it up a little bit rather than just having no painted walls and nothing nothing very spectacular. Um, so we painted everything. Uh, we put some cheap paneling up, so. So we're gonna to squeegee those off. Yeah, flush it down. That's pretty much all there is to prep work though on this, on most cars. Nothing crazy. Put tint on the walls. I was thinking about hanging the rolls on the wall because they don't really have a lot of space. So we might go ahead and do that. Yep, not a lot of space, no glass boards. I don't want them. Not that I don't appreciate them, but I do everything off the car so there's no need. <laughs> Everybody's talking about it getting slow now. Yeah, man. For sure, definitely slows down around now. <laughs> Somebody asked about Glass Aid. Okay, so Glass Aid you can find on certifiedtenor.com. Uh, it's in the store section. Um, also, Film Slingers carries it, and uh, SunDistributingDirect.com carries it. Um, nothing for this one, actually. This is the wifey special. <laughs> so normally on this, um, we'd be charging retail, uh, like 250 250 around here, starting for color stable, uh, a color stable lifetime warranty film. And that would be, uh, using Avery Dennison too. But today we're just having fun and experimenting.
So I added a little bit of extra soap because I wasn't quite sure how this would slide. And it seems like it's a little slick right now, but nothing terrible. So we're gonna let this sit for just a sec. See, and you like sit on the door sill here. <laughs> When you don't have room to open up the car, as long as you can get somewhat in there and you have an enclosed space, that's all you really need. Although it would be great to have a full size. So we're shooting for a full size in February. I'm just stuck in, in this lease right now until then. So unfortunately we gotta get through the entire winter with no front doors on trucks and SUVs in here, which that's gonna blow. That's a lot of work right now. Oh yeah, we way soapy now. Oh, everybody asked about the squeegee. Um, so the yellow squeegee is a flat out by Fusion. Um, not a lot of people have been talking about it. Um, I saw it sitting on a shelf at Sun Distributing and I picked it up and it feels just like the orange crush, but it's got a higher durometer, so it's a little bit harder. I really like it. So it's definitely a, uh, a solid squeegee. People were commenting on Friday about everything being in yellow. That was totally not my intention, but it, uh, I don't know. It, it just turned out that way. So the shank, I sell those on certified tinner. Um, the yellow, uh, this is the triage yellow. I was trying this out because the pink and the blue I'm very familiar with now. Haven't tried the yellow ones. So I like them. And then the towels, those are from Costco. Those happen to be only in yellow. So we got a lot of yellow going on. Somebody asked about SunTech. I'm actually not super familiar with SunTech right now. Um, I tried their standard pro a long time ago or looked at it, the carbon film. It, um, I don't know, it looked a little green, but I hear good things about SunTech for sure. Um, same, same company as Lumar. SunTech just sent you samples, or did they send me samples? I'd love them to send me some samples though, because Max Pro did. So let me get, we'll, we'll start doing all sorts of tests on this if we can get some samples. <laughs> Where do you get that hose? Um, so that's a newer blue style hose from um, sundistributingdirect.com or tintkeg.com. We were all using the Flexilla hose and I was a big fan of it. But, you know, after you use, ew, look at this. Look at how this is just down. That's, that's quality. But after a couple of years, I think a year and a half, um, it started bulging. When you're adding a lot of pressure to it, it bulges right towards this part right here. So I have a swivel and it started bulging in here, especially with hot water. And it started to leak too. So this is supposed to be a little bit more durable and it's a little bit more rigid. Um, I think but overall, when you've got, you know, 80, 90 PSI in it, it works really well. So, supposed to be a hybrid hose too, so I don't think there's going to be any buildup in it, but I can't confirm that yet. Oh, why am I doing it like a... Why am I doing it like a Mustang? We don't need it like that. We don't need it like this. I'm noticing it's curling outwards, though. I don't quite like that. It's like starting to fall this way. Install fine though. Shrunk a little slow, but we're talking about ceramic here, so that's not far from the norm. How to get sponsored or pay less money for tint. I'll tell you what, I'm working on sponsors, but that's for this channel. That's something entirely different. If you want to get sponsored, you have to be the one talking about stuff and getting attention for it, really. So that's how anything works with getting sponsors. They 
they want to give you products so you put it in other people's faces that's the that's the brutal truth of it but you know as long as you are the one that's showing what you like and you weed out all the shit and stick to your honest opinions and stuff like that then nobody's gonna hammer you for it that's how you survive as a youtube creator though oh we don't want to roll it that far down just about there i need my scrub pad where'd my scrub pad go here it is all right Do I use hot water in my soap mix? Um, yeah, especially in the winter. Just depends on the weather. Cold water in the summer. Hot water in the winter. You just, you just do what you can. Um, am I ever going to do a Tesla? I have done a Model 3 and I've done a variety of Model S's, but I haven't yet been in a situation to do one on camera. So if I get one, I'll probably do just the back window, but that would be quite the process for a live stream. That back window would probably take me the same amount of time as a regular car um, until I get a little bit more familiar with them. Oh, let me scoot this back. Look at how much space I got now. I was wondering why. There we go. So on older ones, we might squeegee them off a couple more times. We might wipe off the top edge too a couple more times. Just want to make sure like we got no more dirt lines. You can swipe down the sides like that's all what you're fighting against. Um, have I ever used, or is glass aid reusable? It can be if you, after you use a strip, if you haven't cut all the way through it or as it hasn't torn, you can hang it to dry and it'll pull back to its original shape and you can reuse it probably about once. But the more it gets used, the less tacky the adhesive is and it loses its strength. So a little bit, but not completely. Daniel Reyna asked, how do I filter hot water? I don't. I just run that shit right out of the tap. Water around here um, is not bad, depending on where you are. If I saw lots of little particulates in it, then I do something, but I haven't ever needed to, to filter hot water around here. I don't get like big black specks or scent, uh, sediment or anything like that. Um, in the film, I do have the little filters in the sprayer, um, but that's about it. Um, somebody asked if I've ever killed a battery. Yeah, I've killed plenty of them, especially in the winter. So I do have like a, um, a trickle charger that I'm going to be using um, for customers and stuff like that. But this one, we're just doing the front doors. It's not taking very long, so I pulled it in backwards and didn't feel like setting it up. So it's your laziness on my part, but we should be fine. If we're not, no harm, no foul. We'll give it a good charge overnight. All right, so let's make sure this is in place. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh no! Goddamn film grabbed. All right. You see that right there? We just creased it. It grabbed just past it. See, I'm not perfect. So we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to redo this one in a jiffy. See? All right. So I need, I need everybody to do me a favor and leave an F in the chat for this window. Cause she's bad. <laughs> So if y'all ever seen, leave enough in the chat, please do that now. And we'll grab another piece for this. 
I'm almost thinking of doing another film completely on this door just to see if there's anything else they have to test. We can't do this sideways. Oh, somebody left enough. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, everybody's leaving an F in the chat, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> that is that is now the most fun um failed window I've ever had. Everybody left an F in the chat for that one. So we're cutting this one a little bit different because as you saw before, it fell over there. <sighs> so we're going to, I have like a, please don't fall. I saw like a slight crinkle up here. Everything else looks like it's okay. So we're gonna chop that off. And then we'll get to cutting this out. I believe, and make sure, yep, I'm on the right side. I did F it up. And that's okay, that happens. We're using a ceramic film. I'm not super familiar with it. So some, okay, a couple good questions. How did I go from tinning as a hobby to tinning as a, as a business or a career? Um, it actually wasn't ever really a hobby for me. I started out at an auto accessories shop. Um, my dad owned one. Um, and then the window tinner quit over the weekend. And then I started, he had me start learning window tint. Um, paid somebody to come in and teach me a good portion of the time. So I, I kind of just fell into it, but I kept going with it. I really didn't think I would. Um, it was never a super big passion of mine. But what I come to really appreciate, God, this stuff, you see how this is curling backwards? Yeah, we're, we're, I don't like that. Whenever a film does that, I don't like it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's at least how I got started. Um, but if you are doing this as a hobby and you're looking into getting it as a career, my best advice is to pick up cheap film and practice. Uh, Lexan is very inexpensive. Um, so I'd suggest going to like Lexan Auto, picking up some of their film and then trying it out. Uh, just if you have a car, which I hope you do, um, try it again and again and again. You can never get enough practice on your own vehicle, even though it's the same windows, but you know, just, just keep practicing on your own shit and then try and reach out to friends and family and stuff. Um, you do need a little bit of a workspace for it. So if you don't have a garage, you gotta be a little bit creative and find find some type of a wind-free workspace. I've seen some people that just do it in parking garages and stuff like that. I mean, it's possible, but it definitely doesn't make it any easier on yourself. So try and, try and get yourself a garage. Um, we're gonna be pulling regular clients into the space pretty soon, at least that's what I'm shooting for. So, until I can get, uh, until I'm out of this lease and then I'll get a full-size garage and then hopefully crank things up, come into the springtime. Um, what film am I using? I'm using Avery Dennison, but I'm not using it right now in this car. So, Avery Dennison uh, is what I run around with. I use their NR stuff. I really like it. Been using them for a couple of years. Uh, and... Still when they were uh, Anita, Anita Tech and then Avery bought them. So that's how long I've been using them. So we're gonna toss that there. We're gonna grab the heat gun. I'm still, I still can't get over you guys leaving an F in the chat. That's so great. <laughs> that makes it fun. Um, but yeah, you see how I made the driver's door look simple, easy, and then we come over the, the or the passenger door. I made that look all simple and easy. Come over to the driver's door, and then we fucked it up. It happens. You adapt, and you overcome. It's all, all about how quick you can bounce back. Because we just lost all that time 
and this GoPro isn't gonna give me any more time too. So about an hour and a half is really pushing it on this live stream. I think I've gotten up to an hour and 45. So we gotta get going. And then we'll end things. And then hopefully we'll have another one on Friday in a regular space that you guys are familiar with. My phone's probably powered off too. Yes, it is. What do we got? Do you usually cut all your roll-ups and back glass before shrinking and installing the back glass? Yes, typically. I know there's like, that's just like my personal preference. Um, I know there are a lot of people that will cut and shrink everything and then go systematically and install, and that works great too. Uh, I always just got in the habit of laying dryer sheet out on the back window and then uh, going around prepping the rest of the car. Well, not prepping, sorry, cutting and installing the doors and then I get back to the back glass and then just take it all at once. What did I just say? Just take it. Just, just get it done. That's what I meant to say. But yeah, and we don't have to uh, clean this door as thoroughly this time either because it, we already cleaned it once. Like, so now it's extra clean, if anything. But I would love to be done with these doors. <laughs> this, I'm noticing there's a natural curl inwards with this film. I don't know if that's because it's a sample roll. It's not, it's not bad, but there is, it's noticeable, especially when you are cutting it on the car. Like you see that little curl right there. I'm not a big fan when I see that. Like it doesn't mean the film's bad, but it's just like, that's something you notice when you get familiar with films and stuff. It's just not, not a great thing. I like them to pretty much lay flat. Once you peel the liner, before you peel the liner, they should lay flat. All right, so let's line this up in the top edge, and hopefully we won't have to drop an F in the chat for this one. So pretty much what happened was, uh, I think we're, we're right here, right? Yes, we are. So pretty much what happened was I had it in place. It's sliding around. Like I said, I used a little bit too much soap, and then I kept trying to fidget with it a little bit, and then I created a little tunnel and then I, I like I was pressing it out and it locked in place right here and then it just like rolled on itself it's pretty indicative of like nano ceramics and stuff like that they're a little bit more rubbery sometimes they have adhesives that grab like that's not across the board with all of them but that's a lot of times what I've run into so not a huge surprise that uh that it happened there there we go. We're gonna roll this up. Please tell me there's no, it didn't shift or anything weird on me. It did. Good, sweet Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you guys wanna see another fuck up? This is so fun. I'm having so much fun right now. I'm not, I'm not having fun. So we gotta shift this back over because it's not, it's not in the right, there we go. It's one of those windows, you roll it back up, it shifts forward a little bit. That's just not good enough for me. So we're gonna line this up a little bit better. Do I know how many cars I did in 2018? Uh, no, I have no idea. I keep track of like the total for the year, but I am, um, I have to go through it right now actually. But I, it's just, I don't keep track of um, how many individual cars. I have a list of everything that I did do, but it's on like several note sheets and stuff like that. Stuff like that, so 
I did a bunch. <laughs> Basically that. Choose. Oh, okay. So somebody said they get a lot. Look at this curl. Whew. Damn. So uh, somebody said that they get a lot of customers that watch them and it slows them down. Yeah, I always get nervous when a customer watches. I really don't like most customers watching. Um, you have to do, I'd say, a couple little extra things. And like, if you ever have a little spot that needs to be touched up, you don't wanna do it in front of the customer because then they start looking at what you're doing a little bit closer. And it's not that that spot is unacceptable, it's that now they um, will pick it apart. So what I would suggest is just, um, if you're not comfortable with it, you have to try and make yourself comfortable with letting them know. And it's not necessarily rude. Maybe you don't have a spot for them to wait or anything. I don't know what your situation is exactly, but it's up to you to let them know um, that they that you don't want them watching you work. It's just, it'll slow you down. Um, you can be nice about it though. So a lot of people pull the insurance card like, hey, um, legally, you know, under our insurance policy, I can't have customers waiting back here. This is a professional workspace and it's a hazard for people. So you could pull out a line like that. Um, if you're attending from home, just, you know, you just come up with something and people I'm sure can give you some suggestions in, in the chat, but I usually just tell people to wait up front. Yes, Daniel Arena says his bay is employees only. I post some signs. It's it's not like, uh, you know, it's not rude to tell somebody that they can't wait. You know, if you go to any other, like if you go to like a, um, like a bell tire mechanics place, like a mechanic shop or something like that, they're not letting people walk around either. It's dangerous, but it's a lot more apparent at a place like that. So at a tent shop, just let them know. But yeah, I mean, I'm in the same boat. I don't like people watching most of the time. I've gotten a lot more comfortable with it now. But yeah, I used to used to not like it. We have a pretty window now. Look at that. Even when we pulled it back and pulled it down, it looks good. So finally we're done, <laughs> done with the damn doors. So let's move on to the back glass now, shall we? Yes, it's professional. Professional to let them know that they're not allowed to be in your workspace. You are a professional and that's completely up to you what you want your terms to be. So let's roll this up. Oh, let's put it on the quarters too. The glass aid, we gotta do that. We gotta put it on the quarters and then we'll get going on this back glass. So turn off the car at that point, because we're done with the doors, and now we can focus on the back. How long have we been? Ooh, I like this question. So somebody asked, how do you know when the glass is curved enough so you know it needs to be shrunk? Um, I've seen this, uh, this topic brought up a lot lately, and I don't know why people are giving such counterintuitive advice. Here's my, here's my rule of thumb. Shrink everything. If it's not a little baby quarter window, shrink it. Like I don't care what it is. I shrink pretty much everything. Reason being is it takes how long? Like literally 10, 20 seconds to shrink a window. You can shrink an entire car, like all the doors and stuff like that in a matter of under a minute. So if that's all it takes you to shrink door windows and stuff like that, even when you're new, like shrink it in under five, 10 minutes, like um, just, just shrink everything. Because what happens is you go to install it and you're fighting against fingers and stuff like that. And yeah, there are plenty of professionals that can pull panels, tuck them entirely without having to shrink it, but in my opinion, when you're new, just shrink everything. Like you're, you're creating more work for yourself by not shrinking it.
So, I don't know, that's my two cents. Shrink everything. How should you structure prices for a dealership? Um, that's up to you. So, if the way I look at accounts is based on how much work they're gonna bring me and what they're getting out of it too. So if dealership is just doing it as a complimentary add-on and they're not really looking to do it full time, then don't give them a huge break. Don't really give them any break. If they're gonna pile like three or four cars for you in a day, then sure, you can cut them a little break because they're taking it seriously. But what often happens for dealerships is they're looking to get the cheapest price and they want you to work on their own time. So when they got a job for you to do, they want you to come out and do it ASAP. And oh, sorry, we forgot to call you. And oh, sorry, this, and oh, sorry, that. And they're gonna end up wasting more of your time than it's worth. There are good dealerships out there, but you need to pick and choose the ones that are gonna work for you. So I would just have like minimum terms for them. So if they um, are gonna slack off, then you charge them retail like everybody else. And then they're not making any money off of it anyways. And plus dealerships charge an arm and a leg for anything. So they're probably charging well above what you're charging them. So no matter what, they're usually making some profit on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you go to do dealership work, there's a lot of places that like to just waste your time, not necessarily intentionally, but mostly because you are not the priority and you need them to understand that it is your well-being. So they need to at least have the respect or you need to know when to call it. You need to know when to hold them. Aw, oh, thanks, man. All right, somebody said uh, the glass aid looks like it's helpful. I like to think so, so I appreciate it. You can pick it up at certifiedtinner.com, uh, sundistributingdirect.com, and filmslingers.com. They all are nice enough to carry it, which is awesome. And they've been promoting it some too, which is extra awesome. So this is Lexan's 20% carbon. I've shrank some of this before and it doesn't shrink as easy as a dyed film, which is perfect because we need this live stream done in the next half hour. <laughs> so, uh, might be a little bit, might be a little bit uh, dicey, we'll see. He's shrinking film before installing it, touch the film carefully before the rubber, um, da da. Your videos channel taught me a lot and I tinted my first windows with success. Cool, congrats. Uh, congrats, Nick. Glad to hear it. I like to share what I can. It's fun YouTubing. So we're making an H pattern because this film just is floating all over the place. So I really need this to lock down, at least for a good part of it. And let's grab our heat gun. Hopefully we don't blow a circuit breaker, right? So there's a lot of people saying thank you, so thank you guys, I appreciate it. I need to check to see if there's any super chats too. I don't mean to distract too much, but... <gasps> $10? Who gave me a $10 super chat? Nick Lynn, thank you, enjoy your date night. Aw, thanks Nick. 
That's fucking awesome. Nicklin uh, super chatted ten dollars. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. He says enjoy your date night. <laughs> I have that as a goal for the top. That's awesome. Thank you. We will, and we'll post a picture in the YouTube uh, community when we do that. We've had plenty of them, but a, a community-supported date night is super cool. So somebody asked, uh, how do I line up the glass aid? Um, it's actually pretty easy. This stuff molds very easy. It took a little bit of practice to be efficient, like really uh, happy with my speed on installing it. You just you just get comfortable with using it. So I'll, uh, I'll stretch it out and then just kind of lay it down and then stretch it out more and then lay it down and just kind of go in little sections. Um, but it forms really easy. If you miss your line a little bit, you just pick it back up, lay it back down. Um, make sure the glass is clean though before you go to apply it. Or, like, it was a little damp here, so it started, the edge started to roll on me. Just keep that in mind. So, you can see this stuff. Like, you can do just a video comparison of my last live stream i shrunk avery dennison way quicker than this stuff but this is uh this is a unique film here so this is lexan's carbon um because it has carbon that usually means that it's not going to shrink as fast um it supposedly has no dyes in it um we'll be doing a longevity test i have a, a weird old bookshelf wall with lamps set up there and that's what I intended to do a little while ago. But I get distracted with a bunch of stuff. So I have it in mind. It's just there's so many things that are going on, but things are slowing down now. So Didn't you use the water. It's a better than what? I don't know what you're saying there. What the hell? Oh, I like a lot of slip. My solution, I've been using Tint Tac or Ultra. What do you look for when you're using, uh, what do you have to look for if you're using too much slip? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question completely, but, you know, if you add too much in your bottle, it's not the end of the world. You just make sure that, uh, it's in place and then you can heat it up on the outside of the glass. Um... I'm not using either right now. I'm just using dollar store baby shampoo. Main reason is just I saw it in the dollar store and I was like, hey, this looks like Johnson & Johnson's old baby shampoo. Let me pick it up and see if it's like it. And sure enough, this shit works just like it. This is definitely slower. You just kind of work at the pace the film is going with the heat that you're putting on it. So you hopefully will be able to see it really well, especially with this lighting. Um, so it's just slowly going, nothing crazy. Normally the films that, like a dyed film is gonna shrink a lot faster if you're using like GeoShield. GeoShield film shrinks extra fast too it's kind of freaky but this stuff is just like a slow mover and you just gradually heat it up until it lays down but you just gotta take your time with this stuff some films are just like that though probably a little bit more curling involved in this one than uh than most films. <sighs> what do we got? Tint my car. Bring oh. it in. <laughs> Hit me up on... Uh... Uh, Facebook Messenger or 
Instagram. Start with Johnson Baby Shampoo. Oh, it's always done that. Baby Shampoo breaks down. So, just the longer it sits in your tank, the more buildup you're going to have. That's always been a byproduct of it. So the only one that I've noticed that doesn't have any buildup is, uh, oh, what was it called? Uh, Dawn. Dawn, for whatever reason, does not build up in spray tanks. It's a detergent, but it doesn't leave any scum or anything behind. Yeah, Johnson's is pretty good. Yeah, um, actually I'd be interested if you mix a little bit of like Dawn, if you're not super, if you don't like the way that it works um, as much as baby shampoo, I'd be interested to see if mixing the two, if you still have build up, probably a little bit, but I guess it wouldn't be as severe, right? So we got a funny little cutout up here that we need to go around. That's it. I have not used Lex and Ceram. They have sent me their premium carbon film, but I have not tried their ceramic yet. So I always go around after I cut, I would do this with or without glass aid. I like to go through and polish my edges. I used to shrink, I used to cut the window out and then shrink it, but it depends on the film that you use. Lumar at the time was the best shrinking film ever. Um, I think it still probably is, but other films don't really make it super easy to do things that way, so. Shrink. Cut, polish, so we're ready to install now. <sighs> super chat, somebody else super chat? Daniel Reyna with $15. Thank you, sir. So Nick and Daniel, no message attached to it, but much appreciated. He's been commenting a bunch too. Um, and giving good advice in the chat. I missed some of the some of the questions. I answer what I can, but sometimes when they come in a string, it's just too difficult for me to uh, to actually hear all of them and speak at the same time. I'm not great at multitasking with that. All right, so we need to throw this in there. Let's, let's toss these here. Titwiz! <laughs> Sponsor. Um, oh yeah, Dan Arena, by the way. Um, see this? See that blue scrubby? I got it from Target, off your recommendation too. So we're, I've used one of them, and so far I like them. So thank you for that. We're gonna use it on this one. So that's kind of a, a nice little coincidence there. Am I forgetting anything else? No, should be good. I should be good for now. We got a little bit of mess going on here. Okay, so on this one, we're going to calm the chat down just a little bit for right now. Um, so on this, this back glass, we have a really high brake light that doesn't give me a lot of space. So I'm gonna see if a bulldozer is gonna fit in between it. It should be fine. It fits between most, except like the Chrysler 300 brake light from like 2009. So 
on this one because it's a little older. We're scrubbing it down. Yep, yep, we'll be good. See how that went right back there? This is a, uh, I highly recommend everybody pick these up too. This is the good old scrubber. You can find them on a lot of tool sites. And then they grip the uh, scrub pads and you can just get everything down. Oh, I think I might need another squeegee, but be okay for right now. So we're gonna leave that there. Ew, it's foamy now. It's really gross. We're gonna put an extra towel right here. Have I ever steel wooled the dot matrix? I used to. That's actually how I used to clean glue off of glass. And to be honest, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, I like the white scrub pads way better. Um, reason being is steel wool leaves a lot of little bits behind. And it's not like, it always seemed like I was getting little bits caught in the defrosters. And the white scrub, scrub pads work really well. You can get these blue ones that are a little bit more aggressive. Uh, Tri-Edge has some um, in a couple of different colors in brown and blue. So those seem like they're a little bit uh, like spongier. So they would be really good for getting around defrosters and stuff like that. <sighs> oh, I knew that question was coming. So on the Civics with the shitty rear glass with a with the spoiler, um, the easiest way uh, with everything on the car is to probably take off the spoiler. Second easiest way is to try and splice around it. So you'd have to tint. Uh, I tinted up to the, the just past one of the bottom defroster lines that gets covered by the spoiler. So if you look down, or if you look through the back glass, you'll see a defrost that lines up perfectly with that dis the, uh, spoiler split. So I tinted it, and then I tinted a couple of small pieces in those bottom corners, seamed it on the inside, and you couldn't tell a damn thing. So. If you want to do them all in one piece, they're just really difficult. You can shrink them out on the sides a little bit. Or not on the sides. Um, sorry, you can shrink them a little on the inside of the glass. But it's just a very difficult window. Ooh. I don't like sandpaper and dot matrix. I do have dot matrix though. But I'm not like a huge fan of it. I don't hardly get anybody talking about the dot matrix anymore. It's just been such a... You know, I'd love to make them look that much better, but... I'd charge more if I was doing a lot more extra work to the matrix. And it's, it's just like, it's... It's kind of tough to explain it to a lot of people. Um, and this stuff is a little bit thinner and a little bit more wavy. Definitely not as ooh, 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 like this. Just get barely in. Ugh. Somebody's looking for rolls at a decent price. Hit up Lexan. Um, especially if you're just getting into it. They sell 40 inch rolls for like 100 bucks. You can't beat that price for a decent film. But I can't speak on the longevity of this stuff yet. I just know of all the inexpensive stuff, that's a good route. Um, Scorpion's a pretty economical brand. Um, they don't sell off of websites as far as I know, so you'd have to call them and buy direct. Uh... What's another one? I don't know. I don't mess around with too many inexpensive films, mainly because if you're installing it on customers' cars, and even if it says lifetime warranty, you're getting yourself into trouble because that shit's gonna come back. It just does. It'll turn purple. It'll, uh, you know, it'll bubble up.
uh, any number of regular film failures. That's that's why you see purple tint. Is like you can only save so much money on stuff like that. So just be careful. Forty dollars for a tint meter. That sounds like a pretty smoking deal on it. Uh, the one that I have is a basic one by Tint Enforcer, I think it's called. Um, just goes over door windows, and that was like, I think that was 80 bucks. So there's a bunch of them. There we go. Doing pretty well. How do you prevent dust particles in your garage? Um, you just don't leave the film exposed for too long. There's, I don't know. I see, as, as long as your air, like there's no airflow in here. So it's like everything just kind of settles, nothing crazy. So yeah, sure, when you're walking around, you might kick up a little bit, but for the most part, you know, you could do something like this, wet the floor a little bit, if that makes you feel better. Most of the dust and dirt comes from air movement. Like lots of, like, so if you have ventilation and stuff blowing through, you're going to have some problems. Um, another problem is, you know, other people working on shit, blowing, like vacuuming, blowing stuff in the air, that could be a problem. But as long as your air is relatively calm then it's it comes down to your installation so if you don't see like you can look around and if you just see a bunch of like a shitload of dust particles floating around then yeah you you're probably going to have a little bit of an issue but i've tinted in a bunch of environments i've tinted in a wood shop style environment so they used to make speaker boxes in this bag uh, that i was at at a shop and they would go through, they would give it a quick blowout. They would, uh, they would give it a quick blowout, you know, do a couple things to clean it up a bit. But you couldn't set anything down without getting sawdust on it. And I would just shut the door and move at a reasonable pace. And for the most part, I got a little, little air bubble right there. Everything else looks really good. Little finger right there. So we're gonna press him out. Kia Bass, what up, man? He's, I have seen Kia Bass in my comments for a very, very, very long time. And I appreciate you, man. <laughs> just wanted you to know that. I just always remember seeing you leave, leave good comments and stuff like that, so. <sighs> I appreciate it. Sometimes I, I eventually see certain names I recognize a bunch of times. So, appreciate you hanging out. So, this was a 40 inch roll. So do we have enough? We do, we got plenty to do these quarters. So, off the back glass, chop it in half, use it for your quarter windows, and then we will wrap up and we'll be all set. Back glass is done. So, the uh, bulldozer was plenty big enough, um, or there's plenty of big enough space back there for me to get that in there comfortably. I used a couple tools for these bottom corners. Everything looks really good. Gave it a good scrub down before we got it to install it. And this is not a new car, so I don't know. Keep that in mind. Oh no, it shifted. It shifted. I didn't tack it. Did I just fuck it up? Please don't, please don't, please don't. We'll have to cut off a new piece. Oh, I think we're okay. All right, so let's peel this off. So, for example, there's a lot of guys that would not shrink these.
All right. <laughs> There's a lot of comments now, Captain. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So what I was saying on this quarter window is the uh, this bot. Um, sorry. People are asking about when do you shrink windows, when do you not? You'd probably be okay with not shrinking that quarter, but you saw that I shrunk it anyways because it's just. It's a bigger quarter window. Why not? It takes like five seconds to shrink it. So just, just do it. And then if we get some memes for that one, let me grab a razor because we got a sticker on the inside. Let me grab a question too. How long have we been going? An hour 14. So we got probably got some battery left. Uh, da -da. Oh, we got another super chat. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jay Wise. Jay Wise, he's been a longtime commenter too. Thanks, bud. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate that. What, somebody said we're halfway there to the date night? Oh, it's so cool. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so Nick says, Thanks, man. I can't wait to taste that longevity of this Lexan film as well. I bought some Cooper Optics from eBay and found out that they were not authentic. Yeah, so that's the problem with buying off of random sites like eBay and whatnot. You never, it's so easy to bait and switch film. So, um, that's, that can be a problem. So, what film? Oh, Kia Base asked, What film is it? Um, so we are using um, Lexin 20% on the back. We're using Max Pro Ceramic on the front. We're doing some mix and matching because we just need to see how some of this stuff works. So I have a bunch of, you know, extra rolls in my garage. They wanted me to try out their, their Max Pro shit. Um, so we're trying it out. I don't know. I was surprised they sent me a sample of ceramic. They also sent me a, the sample of their new XEL which was a non-conductive metalized film. I'm not, this is not an endorsement for Max Pro by any means. We're just trying it out and they got lucky because they're like, I don't know, it's supposed to get samples from SunTech. Uh, they took down my info and they never called me. So somebody go harp on SunTech or something. This quarter window may have shifted, so we may have to drop another F. I just, I didn't lock it down. And then I, uh, I was cutting it out. I didn't think it was shifting. And then the next thing I know, whole goddamn thing shifted. So we're going to see. Might have to redo this one. But if if we're there, we're fine. We shrunk it a little bit. But nothing crazy. Like somebody said, like, when do you shrink? Just always shrink. I don't know. I get tired of, of seeing people recommending not shrinking. Just because it's like, what? Like, I, if you don't shrink windows, that's fine. It's, that's not harping on anybody that doesn't. But it's like, there seems to be this like pride in not shrinking door windows. And it's like, bruh. Oh, sweet. It fits. Cool. So we're good. It's like, look, it takes a couple of seconds to shrink a door window, but it also takes a couple, a couple of seconds to like remove a panel and shit like that too, which is why you wouldn't need to shrink a, a average door window if you use like a gasket wizard or something like that. But you're trying to like spread out the film over an even space and, and the glass is curved, so you might as well just shrink it a bit and call it a day. If it was like taking me half an hour to shrink some door windows, I can completely understand, but it doesn't. So that's my rant. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. <laughs> oh, oh, there's an Apple sticker. I should take this off, but it, it, somebody left it on the car. So I just, I don't know. I haven't taken it off yet. I use Reno 70% ceramic, no glare issues. Oh, that's good. One shout out. For, yeah, see, I didn't clean off the glass right here especially well. So that's why that's peeling. Uh, so Daniel Reyna has one shout out for, for Reno. I talked to them a little bit. They gave me a free t-shirt at the conference. And they also gave me a cell phone slap bracelet, which is really funny. Those things that you go, Wacha! but it's like made for the back of a cell phone. Uh, da -da. Somebody asked about Solar Guard Ultra. 
performance. What? Hang on. I didn't quite catch this one. Sometimes the chat is so busy. It's like phone ringing. It's like sometimes it's just so busy. You can't pay attention to everything. And then you start talking and then other people start commenting. And I got to finish my thought and then the comment is gone. Okay, so we're going to shrink this one too. Real simple, just like we did on the other one. So I move everything to the bottom. And I want to emphasize shrinking, easy to shrink things. Just because, like look, how much longer is this going to take? One, two, three, four. That's it. I'm done. Okay? <laughs> oh. Don't, oh, Cubase said he's shrunk fingers on the inside. Yeah, you, that's the biggest opportunity for you to have uh, shit run back into your film. So that's the other reason. Is like anytime you have a finger that pops up on the inside of the glass, it's just a vacuum for whatever's underneath it. So even if you if you clean it, it's not a good thing. So just take a couple seconds, shrink it, call it a day. The end. So I got a nice big ceramic border with this window. Just peel it, let it hang. Oh, good question. Am I still using stainless steel for the glass aid? Uh, yeah, um, carbon steel will work, but the 30, I, I only picked up the 30 degree carbon steel blades and they're so sharp that sometimes they'll cut through it. So the stainless steel ones I would use anyways, because if you happen to put too much pressure and cut through the glass aid, um, you're not going to ruin it. Like you're not going to ruin the window, uh, as, as bad as you would. Um, a carbon steel blade. So it's it's cut resistant, it's not cut proof. Um, so it takes off all the pressure off the window, so you, you should be completely fine. I haven't noticed anything, and yes, I have cut through it from time to time. It happens, and we move on. Ew, what is that? I got like a little piece right here. I wonder if it's some shit that just stuck to the window because I didn't really clean it that well. I just like wiped, oh no. Ew, ew, ew. I got like a couple little black turds here. We're gonna see if we can clean this off. Or, yeah. So, we're gonna look at this. Yeah, we're good. Cool, that came off. Ew, you see this? You see this on my squeegee? So I've been running it up here and it's been pulling shit off of it. Ew. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> it happens. Ah, oh, no, I got a big one here. Ah. No, it's not. Okay, that, yeah, that could have been, but I got one here. No, 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 I grabbed it here, actually. I didn't grab it there. So it might seem like it was that, but it is actually not that. How much soap and how much water? I think I get that question at least 10 times a day. And what I'll tell you is every window is different and every film's different. So the best way to figure out a happy medium is to just kind of play around with, uh, with your solution. So add about like a couple tablespoons to like a spray bottle and see how you like it. Oh, this is the other thing that sucks about glass aid. So like, you know, let's say you fucked up a window, you pulled off the glass aid. You could totally leave it on there until after you're done. But my dumbass likes to pull it off beforehand, so we have to retape it unless we want to use another creative method. So, side note. It's not all sunshine and rainbows is what I'm getting at. And we're trying to speed up and get this done. 406, can we get an F for that quarter window? We're also going to cut this one out sideways because there goes my scrap. Oh. 
<laughs> We're starting with the F's again. Uh, somebody said I need to make an FAQ. I really should. Um, there is something about telling people to just go check out the FAQ that I've never liked, though. Because it's like... Like, sending, like I'll try and reference stuff with videos that I made. That's usually my best thing. It's like, I'll pull up videos where I've talked about shit in the past. Um, but it's like... No matter where you put out all the information, there's always people that are going to ask where it's most convenient. And this is all about, you know, answering whatever questions people have along with tinting and seeing what, what the real life is like. So I, I really don't mind. I didn't want to come across as arrogant or anything, but uh, it's just I always get that question. Oh, no, no, no. You need to shrink it this way. So I rolled this sideways and I almost just screwed myself by shrinking this uh, vertically. So be careful. We almost had another F. We've had enough of those on this car, right? There we go, that's better. Even it out a little bit. Let's take this on the inside. Shoop. All right, so now we're gonna be a little bit more cautious, right? We learned that there's scummy black shit just on the outside, so we're not gonna sweep as far out. Look at that, look at that, ew. So we're not gonna sweep as far out. We're still gonna be just as careless. Um, so when I peel these, somebody said that I touched the corner. Not exactly. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and go a little slower this time. So we're going to sweep this down and then just mist the very top. So when I peel these, I only am grabbing the very edge and then I'm peeling the whole thing and then we let it dangle and then we spray it, right? And then when I scoop it, I'm scooping the backside. So all I've touched is this edge and the reason why I'm comfortable with that is that edge is going to be behind the dot matrix. So no problems there. And then let's make sure this lines up and we're good. So it was just negligence on my part with uh, going a little bit too fast, not being super thorough. Have I ever had any problems shrinking with a glass aid? It could like bunch up a little bit towards the bottom. Um, but if you go back earlier in the stream, what I always do with my windows is I shrink it, uh, completely to the edge and past, and then I will take the, uh, sorry, I'm trying to make sure these lay down. We got a little guy right there. That was where I shrunk it the wrong way. Um, so what I was saying was with the glass aid, um, I will, uh, cut the, shrink it past my edges, and then, oh, this is not flat. There we go. So I'll shrink it past here, um, past the edge, and then uh, I'll cut the film, and then peel the glass aid, and then polish up the edges to lay it flat. So I do that regardless if I'm using glass aid or not, because when you shrink uh, and cut your edge, a lot of times it can disrupt the way it was shrunk in a in a way of speaking i guess um it basically like you're shrinking spots of the film together and then when you cut it you're cutting through those uh areas that you just shrunk and sometimes you might have a little finger pop up or something so you just go back through polish up your edges and you'll be good to go hope that answered that so now we're we're pretty good i'll wipe this down you can check it over Duh, duh, duh. We got some. I know I saw a couple little guys. So this is always what can really take up a lot of your time is touch-ups. Before you know it, you'll get to the easy part of the car and then you'll be taking an extra half an hour. You know, all your stuff is jumbled around. Like I'm, I'm speaking for myself right now. So it happens. 
Do I leave my heat gun on? No. <laughs> so somebody asked, do I leave my, my heat gun on to warm the glass? Or not warm the glass, warm the garage in the wintertime. No, I actually have a 30 to 80,000 BTU uh, propane heater right over there because this garage does not hold heat. So we fire that up and it's gonna get pretty chilly here in the winter. So that's why I picked that up. We got one little finger over here and we should be all set. The shortcut. Um, there's some good and there's some bad. So it's not as smooth as the side swipe. No, oh, sorry, that's not it, this shortcut. Figured I'd bring this up too, because they just recently announced a lot of people are, are getting these in stock. Um, I like this for specific corners, and what the what the the creator said was this is the most helpful part. And he's absolutely right. Like when you get to corners like this and like this, you want something like this plastic bit here on the side swipe. Uh, it'll drag against the film. It, it, you don't have a ton of space with it. So with this, you can put a little bit more pressure and get those corners down better. So I like it for that. I don't really use it for cleaning down there so much, but it feels nice, it looks nice, it's definitely solid. I think it's a good thing to have on hand um, for those, and I've just been taking it in every car that I have, um, getting used to it. So I like it overall. I need a trash can. I don't have a trash can, like this. I got one little finger here, so let's go. It's not quite down here, but let's just do this. Somebody ask about a... Oh, you gotta unlock this. Should the room be a specific temperature? No, it doesn't have to be, but comfortable is always nice. So I'll tint in as cold as like 50 degrees, like 40, 45, 50. But most, any shop around here that dips below that is gonna have heat on. So you don't need to have it at like 50 or like 60 or 70 um, to tent. You just need it above freezing, honestly, but it definitely makes it harder to work. <sighs> this is also Lexan. So, you know, I forget that. I, I forget that I'm using Lexan sometimes with this stuff, so. <sighs> we just gotta get used to like what Lexan does. But you can see this isn't exactly like the most streamlined of processes for this film right now. I did notice a little bit here. A little bit of air. We're just tightening that up a bit. And then we should be good now. So let's take off this towel. <sighs> We're probably really low on, on GoPro juice, <laughs> stream juice, battery. So we're probably gonna have to end things in a minute. Yeah, this is that, that frit line. It's not sitting down very well around there. But that'll even out. It's kind of heavy here for sure. There's a lot of water up in here, so that looks all nice and then it's, it's gonna silver out for sure. Does carbon film has a hay, have a haze? Yes. Any carbon film that I've used has a haze. I did see GeoShield talk about something recently. I haven't looked into the details yet, so you could go check them out about their new carbon film that they talked about. But they haven't sent me any or talked to me about it yet, so I haven't looked into it past that. Um, other than that, yeah, it's just the nature of carbon. So carbon particles, um, they try and make them really, really small. Good God. See what happens when you shrink it sideways. Um, carbon particles though, they try and make them really, 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 really small. And the smaller they make them, the more see-through the film is. If at least that's what people say. So, uh, that's where that haze comes from. Dye, you don't have any particles, it's just coloring. So, well, much more microscopic particles really for dye. 
So, good, sweet Jesus. This is what happens when you shrink in the wrong direction. <sighs> also too much soap. Also Lexi. <laughs> Hopefully we're done now. We'll wipe it down. Well, it's already mostly wiped down. And then we should be done. This looks good. The quarter looks good now. We got some silvering that's gonna even out. It looks very nice on this side though. So we'll just stay on this side. We got an apple sticker. Should probably take that off, but we got a fast food bag. Because we didn't clean it out entirely. And then we have, we make sure the key's Rick and Morty. We have the last one. And then that looks good too. Yep, little like, things on the outside. Huh, so that's it. We done. We are done with the Civic. I wonder if my stream will break if I take this car outside. I have a feeling it will, but we can look. Okay, so let me get to, let me just check this real quick. Lobster cannon, let's get this trash can fun. <laughs> the trash can fund rolling. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've been leaving shit over there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lobster Cannon. Much appreciated. Mark Moyer, keep up the killer work, dude. Love the live videos, dude. Aw, thanks, man. Oh, shit, another person? So Mark Moyer, he super chatted $5. Lobster Cannon, he super chatted $5. You guys have been leaving comments, I know. I really appreciate it. Um... Uh, with a Pontiac symbol. I can't pronounce this. Belua boy? Something like that. Uh, I usually don't support the heterosexual lifestyle choice, but I like your content. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, uh, damn, the tape's so bendable. <laughs> This tape is like my girlfriend too. I don't have tape. <laughs> I use orange sets. Yeah, put some moisture. Uh, you guys are funny. Alrighty, so we're gonna. I'm going to attempt to roll this outside, and then we'll see if my Wi-Fi will not cut out. So I'm gonna leave this on top of the car, and then we'll pull this out, give it a nice little walk around outside, and then call it the end of the stream. What am I looking for? Keys. I need keys and a towel. Always bring your tool belt too when you go outside. <sighs> oh yeah, my neighbors. Like, it's so funny opening this garage in the middle of winter, or like, I mean in the middle of the night, because you have all these lights that automatically turn on and it just like blasts outside. And then you have all these RGB strips. It's crazy. Well, we started, so that's good. Okay, so first impressions. This is the, oh, what film are we using? Oh, wow, the color's so similar. So this is the uh, Max Pro ceramic here, and then this is the uh, Lexan carbon. God, Lexan has such a nice color to it. God damn, they look like identical. They're not, I swear to God, they're not. Cool, that's first impressions of that. Oh, we got somebody going by. I hope they don't live here. <laughs> You're just like looking in my garage like all that. So we're gonna leave that up there and then we're gonna end things. There we go. That's it. The busted ass Civic, but it's tinted. We've got a little bit, I think it's starting to rain a little bit. So we got some water droplets coming down. But that's gonna do it guys. Let's give it a nice sweep. Oh, I saw something. I saw a little finger. So this is one of those pinch points. So, press that out. Good. And good. Alright guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will give it five more seconds to look at this, uh... 
two dollars by deadlift for the trash can <laughs> thank you sir i appreciate it hopefully you guys can still see this um but i'm gonna go ahead and end it thank you to everybody that super chatted today and hopefully i'll have another stream friday and i'll see you guys in the next one Da, da, da.